Now, if you're having dry eyes, stinging, scratchiness, sensitivity to light, difficulty focusing, when you look at something, you see it, then it starts to fade out and get blurry again. You start blinking and it starts to become clearer again. That all has to do with dry eye. Now, I want to really educate you about dry eye. I believe I'm going to be able to help many. Why? Because you're looking at someone right now who's been suffering with this for quite some time in the past. I've done my homework. And when you have dry eye, you're having inadequate tear production, poor tear quality, prolonged screen time on your computer, environmental factors such as aging, as well as certain medications that might be causing it. And the first thing I'm going to tell you is to follow the 2020 rule. That means every 20 minutes when you're looking at your screen or your smartphone, you want to look 20 feet away at an object for 20 seconds. And when we're on our smartphone or our computer, we don't blink enough. And the number one reason why we get dry eyes while we're working on our smartphone or our computer is that we're not blinking. Blinking takes the gland that secretes the fluid in the upper outside of each eye, the lacrimal duct, and it kind of pushes the fluid across the eye along with two other things which I'll cover in a minute. And it drains in the inside of our eye. So when we blink, we're taking that fluid and we're moving it around along with two other important elements. There is a tear film structure on our outer eyes and it's composed of three main layers, each with distinct functions. The outer layer is a lipid layer that comes from the mybobian glands, which are sebaceous glands located in our eyelids. And these glands secrete a lipid substance that secretes across our tear film. And the middle layer is called the aqueous layer. This is the bulk of our tear film. This is produced by our lacrimal glands located in the upper outer part of each eye orbit. And the third layer is the inner layer called the mucin layer. And this ensures that the tear film adheres to the ocular surface by spreading the aqueous layer evenly over the cornea and conjunctiva. And here's the big problem. The lipid layer, which is the oils, as well as the aqueous portion coming from a lacrimal gland up in here, and the mucin layer all have to work together. And if they're imbalanced, that will lead to your dry eye. And the first thing you'll probably hear is get on those natural lubricating drops, preferably preservative free. That's most important. And your doctor may say, well, you need to try these different drops. And again, they're all a little bit different. In certain drops, they seem to work better than others. You'll have to go through that experimentation. But all in all, you might be using these drops way too often. It doesn't mean there's any harm, but that may not be your solution. And there's a couple of tips I can give you right off the bat. Applying warmth to our eyes, like a moist heating pad. They have these little type of electric things you can buy that go over the eyes, using hot water. That seems to be a big helper for me. Hot water beating on top of my forehead, dripping over the eyes. And one of the most important things we can do is use a real non-abrasive, one that doesn't have lots of chemicals type of shampoo. We say baby shampoo. I think that's the best. Take a little bit in your finger after you heat up your eyes when you're in the shower and you're going to just lightly rub back and forth over your eyelids, not pushing on the eyes at all. What that's going to do is help clean the eyelids and where the eyelids are, the upper and lower eyelids, that's where the mybobian glands secrete that oil. And that oil, that lipid layer is the most important thing because when we have fluid that comes from our lacrimal glands that meets with that oil, the fluid doesn't dissolve or disintegrate as fast because the oil keeps that lubrication there. And every time that we blink, and that's why it's important that when you're on your smartphone or your computer, blink often, what that does, it helps the lacrimal gland secrete more fluid as well as the mybobian gland secrete more of that lipid layer so they can work together. So what it does, it allows the secretion of that oil and fluid as well as allowing it to pass underneath the eye, over the eyeball, underneath the lid that is, and it drains on the inside where our nasal area is on both sides. So blinking, 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 that if I ask you right now, close your eyes and just hold them together. You could open it up 
and you can blink again. There are exercises that when you have dry eye, just start closing your eyes firmly, open it up, close your eyes firmly, open it up. You may want to do that 30 seconds, 60 seconds, intermittently throughout the day. That seems to be be a great helper for me and I know it will help you tremendously. And there's no doubt that the most important thing you can do for dry eyes is make sure you're not dehydrated. You need to drink water because that hydration of that water makes its way through your system to help your tear production for overall health of your eyes. And if you live in cold climates, that could be a problem. Having a humidifier in your room will definitely be helpful. That humidifier will keep that moisture. Cold wind. If you're sitting in front of the air conditioner, if it's at home, if it's at work, or even in your car, that air blowing on your face is gonna dry out your eyes. Stay away from that air conditioner. That's a big, big no-no. And from a nutritional point of view, definitely healthy fats, olive oils, omega-3s, any of the omegas. But getting that healthy fat helps those mybobian glands because that's the oils we need to keep the fluid from drying out. So after we heat up our eyes, if it's a heating pad, one of the little heating uh, types of things, you, element you can buy, a little type of thing that fits over your eyes, or even after taking the shower, there's a little exercise you can do. You don't have to do it if you use heat, because to me, that's why I love uh, using a little bit of baby shampoo and just kind of rubbing it back and forth just for like 10 seconds, then washing it off again after the heat. But if you put heat on it, there's something else you might want to try if nothing else has worked for you is just what you're going to do is you're going to make sure your fingers are clean. And after you heat it up, everything's warmed up by just starting from the inside of our eye as we close our eyes and we just go over the eyelid, the upper eyelid, just the upper eyelid. Don't push over your eye really, really lightly, starting from the inside, working your way out. It's hard with your fingers. Okay, you'll do it on both sides. Then you want to come up underneath the lower eyelid from the inside of the nasal area and go up real, real gently. Do not push over the eye. Just try to focus on the eye lashes where they are, the upper and lower. You may not have a lot of eyelashes like myself, but you do or don't, that's where the mybobian glands are. Because by doing this and warming it up helps release that congested area, maybe something that's hardened up in there, maybe it's gotten crusty in there. There's a condition called blepharitis where the mybobian glands start to dysfunction because they're dried up and they're not working. You can get a little bacteria in there that can cause a lot of dry eyes. So that's why I think it's a great idea to make sure we focus where the eyelashes are, the upper and lower, by using the heat, using the baby shampoo, a little bit of light massage going upwards, starting from the inside, working your way out. You can do it a few times. If that doesn't work, you can take uh, maybe something really soft and use it too, as long as it's disinfected and clean. That can be a big help. I want you to realize that a lot of dry eye can come from these mybobian glands because when they're not working, that will not produce the oils that the outer part of your eye needs. So you won't have that problem. And it's so important that when you have dry eye, give your eyes a break. Make sure you're getting proper sleep so the cells can repair and heal. And it's also a good idea that they do have gels, preservative free also, that's thicker that you would put on at night inside your eye. Maybe a drop or two, some gels you can dab in there. I like the ones you could put drops on there. We don't have to touch it. There's few gels out there. Make sure they're preservative free. And this gives your, your, your eyes a chance to hydrate. Uh, the problem is, is that when you put it in your eyes, don't expect to start reading and doing things on your iPhone or computer because it's going to get blurry. That blurriness is normal, but that really helps lubricate the eyes so that dryness can start to go away. The other thing that I've learned is that when our eyes get dry and they feel okay during the day because you've been using maybe some drops and doing your heat, and doing everything right and stay away from the cold wind and the air condition blowing in your eyes. It's a wise idea to use the drops even when they're not dry, okay, intermittently, because you wanna sustain it. You don't wanna to get to that level to where you start regressing so much. Now you gotta take all this time to get back to where what feels good and what's normal again. So you might wanna take that into consideration. And there's just a few more things I wanna rehash. One is nutrition, process refined, foods you're eating, excessive refined sugars are not good. It's inflammatory. 
And what the research shows that a lot of conditions with dry eye can be stemming from inflammation. There are drugs that your optometrist or ophthalmologist commonly recommend and their drops to reduce inflammation, anti-inflammatory drops, because they're finding that a lot of people with dry eye have inflammation. But if you eat healthy, your fruits and vegetables, your legumes, your healthy fats, like your salmon, your tuna, your healthy fishes, your omega-3s, your omega-7s are good, are, are good for this as well. Uh, your pumpkin seed oils are good, your olive oils, uh, any healthy oil, not the vegetable oils, but you wanna make sure you're getting those oils. That will really make a big change for you. Lots of water along with that, even exercise because we're getting more circulation, more changes in our uh, body's chemistry. There's another thing I wanna mention lastly, it's massaging the eye. When I say massaging the eye, uh, there are techniques that uh, people have done, facial massages, I never want you to massage on the eyes. Never push on the eyes. Very important. But when you massage around the eyes and stimulate around the eyes and put heat around the eyes, if you just take time to stimulate those eyes around the eyes in the eye orbits or anywhere around the facial area, you're bringing more blood supply in there. Hyperemia. If you just stimulate this and just start tapping around it, you'll feel tingling. That's the hyperemia, that's the increased blood supply that brings in uh, nourishment, circulation, and very, very important in any part of our body. We wanna get rid of all that toxins, waste toxins. That's where our lymphatic system uh, kicks in, where it circulates back to the lymph nodes in the outer ear, so it drains down uh, up of the clavicular, clavicular area so it can get back into the circulatory system as we can excrete all those extra toxins. So if I was gonna say one thing to you, be careful with that excessive screen time, but all it boils down to one important thing, gotta start blinking more. Because if you're not blinking enough and you're, you're straining, not only are you gonna strain your eyes, but your eyes are gonna dry out because blinking helps keep that lubrication and helps keep your eyes happy. So I really hope that this video serves you well. This is from my heart to you. I've been through a lot myself. I've done so much and I know what works and I'm trying to share it with you so you can help your family, loved ones and friends because I know this information is extremely important and please share it with them. Leave your comments uh, below because I'd be very happy to hear that you've done well in the near future as well. Uh, that's about all I have to say with you. Please make it a great day. I'm Dr. Alan Mandel.